Right. The negative outcomes of divorce disproportionately impact men. That's why I wanted to kind of finish my thought earlier. Yeah, go ahead. Um, like I said, my husband and I have gone through rough patches where we didn't think we would stay married. Um, for me, what changed my heart and my mind was understanding that we made a blood covenant. It's not some weird, freaky witchcraft type of thing. It's literally something humans have been doing forever. So, like I said, he was a virgin. I was a virgin when we got married. And obviously, when you have sex, um, you know, there is blood because you're a virgin. And when I understood that we made a pact and a covenant in blood, I knew that even if I couldn't stand him, I hated him, I wanted to leave him, he's my husband no matter what I do. No matter where I go, if I separate, no matter what I do, he's my husband and I'm, you know, his wife. And if I slept with another man, I'm committing adultery before God because I've made that pact with him. And like I said, this is something that people have been doing since the beginning of time, um, in wars, um, in you know, even religious settings. And in the Old Testament, for this to make sense to people, and especially Christians, in the Old Testament, when the Israelites, Israelites sinned, they sacrificed animals, and that was their offering, and that blood spilt was the way that their, their sins could be forgiven. And then in the New Testament, it wasn't animals, it was Jesus Christ that was sacrificed and his blood was spilled so that whoever believes in him would be saved and their sins would be forgiven. So blood covenant is the most powerful type of covenant you could make. And as Christians, you know, you understand that in the, you see it in the Old Testament, you see it in the New Testament, and when you get married, you are making that pact. If you're both virgins, you made that pact. If you're not and you have a history, that pact is made in the blood of Christ. And like I said, I don't believe in born-again virgins, as in you're biologically a virgin again, your hymen is intact again when you gave your life to Christ. No, it's not. But the blood of Christ forgives you, and you made that covenant with your husband regardless of your past. You made that pact and that covenant in Christ. Does that make sense? So I'm saying all that to say like, I'm not, I don't condemn anybody with a past, because like I said, our society is so screwed up. We're 60 years past the sexual revolution. We have a lot of work to do here. But I'm just sharing my perspective that I don't view my marriage based on, you know, our ceremony, our wedding day, or even our wedding ring, or our paperwork that we signed at the government one time for like 30 minutes at their office. We're married because I made a blood covenant with him. And there's no separating that. There's no, what God put together, let no man separate it. And there's no divorce for me. There's no separating for me. There's no adultery for me because I gave my life to him. And I'm creating life with him. We have five children, and we're going to have grandchildren. And this is a long-term, lifelong thing. And not just that, it's a generational thing. And so it's not just a religious you know, pact. It's even a biological, a scientific pact. And I wish that we could you know, slowly get back to that understanding. And even though we have mistakes and we've done things wrong, we could teach the next generation to do it better than we do. And just in the same way that the sexual revolution screwed us up, we can go back. They taught us, you know, sexual revolution and feminism and all of that taught us that this is the way to go about life, is to sleep around. Well, we can be the change. We can tell the next generation, starting from right now, 2023, this is how you do life. I've done it the other way, and it hurt, and it messed us up. We have so much divorce. We have so much abortion. We have so many, you know, just people just sleeping around, and we don't know how to love each other. We don't even know how to talk to each other as men and women. And we see the fruit of all of that. And we can be the change and say, this is not how you do it, son. This is not how you do it, daughter. You can be the change. I've tasted the fruit of the sexual revolution, of hookup culture, of this degeneracy, and I don't want you to taste it. I want you to do better than me. And that's what we get to do as you know, a husband and wife, as mother and father. And that's what Lawson and I get to do. That's my husband. That's what we get to do for our children. And then they get to teach their children and honestly, it feels so helpless because the world is so messed up, but it's not helpless. In the same way that they screwed us up, we can change it. We can change the, direct, the, we can change the direction that it's going. And we can change the, re, re, sorry, <laughs> we can change the rhetoric. Does that make sense? You can change it. You see the fruit of it. You don't like it. Be the change. That was moving. Well, well said.
Well said. That was good. That was good. Yeah. Wow. Um, we all have. Appreci- I'm not, I'm not like saying, "Oh, I'm a virgin. I got married when I was, you know, young, and I was a virgin." Like I don't have any self righteousness in myself. The only righteousness I have is in Christ. So I'm not better than any of you. Yeah. Well, I, and so I, it's just that we need Jesus, and we need to change things, and we need sure. better for our children. Does that make sense? Sure, and I, I appreciate you opening up about that. I mean, just going back though to um, you know, you mentioned blood covenant and and religion and Jesus. Um, I, I mean, the the problem with all that though, when it comes to marriage, and and this your train of conversation there started off kind of because I brought it back to marriage, is that what people who are trad cons, traditional conservatives, is they fail to realize that the state provide, uh, excuse me, you fail to realize that the state presides over your marriage, not your biblical values. So when the woman is unhappy, she's going to the state, not God. So even women who are godly and pious, even if you're a man and you're godly and pious, it is not a bulletproof path towards an everlasting marriage that is never subject to to the negative ramifications of divorce. And even without the paperwork, women can leave, right? If they're just not happy, if the marriage is not healthy, they can just leave whether or not the man has any money for her to get from the divorce. So the problem is just that men and women, wives and husbands need to understand each other. And thankfully, my husband and I stayed together because we learned the truth and we learned how to work through our problems and we didn't divorce. And that's the whole reason why we do any of this stuff online, you know, coaching and all of that is because we learned some things the hard way and we want to pass on what we learned because it saved our marriage. Does that make sense? Well, and I, I mean, first off, I obviously want to congratulate you because it sounds like you have a good marriage and I'm not saying that people can't have good marriages. Um, I, I guess just my whole thing is, is that as a guy, it's it's not it's a, a risk, I, yeah. it's, a, it's a risk and you know um, I think Orion was making a really really good point here is you know when the financial incentives are there for women to pursue a divorce it, it could be like you know it, it looks very tempting to just be like you know what I can get all this money I'm kind of we're arguing blah 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 okay let me just leave. I can get this money. If if there's if you put in front of somebody, hmm, okay, I can get paid fifty thousand dollars a year. Let's say your your man's a high earner, he's gonna pay some certain alimony payment. We've heard of astronomical alimony payments in the six figures, seven figures, eight figures. Um I perhaps, you know, look. Well, I guess one of my points here is that this is a, a really high bar, and we don't see this in relationships in society very often. Like, what jobs do people that exist in the world where, like, no matter what, you cannot be removed from that position? Like, p- Pope? Like, Supreme Court Justice? Like, and, yeah. and, and those folks are vetted over decades of a career. And I'd like to think that what we've seen throughout most of human history is that when we give people a place where under no circumstances they can be removed we see a tendency towards abuse. Well, the Bible says that if there is adultery, it's grounds for divorce. If there's abuse and you're physically like endangered, like you're in a life or death situation, you should separate, you know what I mean? And if it's not worked out, then yeah, I mean, but most people divorce before those things happen. And I think if women felt like loved or whatever and men felt respected in their marriage they wouldn't get divorced so it's not the money that wives are after i don't believe that i believe that they're seeking emotional relational intimacy and the problem is across the board wives and husbands are the problem wives and husbands can be the solution 